Today I'm going to show you how to save so much money on watercolor paints. I'm going to show you how to make all the colors you'll ever want or need from three colors. How much did you pay for your last 12 color watercolor set? Well, I say get yourself three really good quality paints, pay less for it and enjoy all the colors you would if you bought a bigger set. Are you ready? Let's do it. These are the colors I've chosen for today. Daniel Smith Essential Set and that's really all you need. They're on sale on Amazon at the moment. I am picking the best of the best and not paying a lot of money for them. Now, because I do not like to paint from tubes, I have told you that before, I am using my pants and if you want to know how I went from this to this there's a video you can watch and I will link it in the description for you and uh, for today I am going to pick my cool ones okay I think they're a lot more vibrant so it's this one this one and this one these are the three we're going to use that's all we need because these are the three primary colors and primary colors means that they are the only ones you can't get from mixing okay so red blue and yellow and some people will tell you the red should actually be magenta and the blue is actually cyan <laughs> like you see in those very expensive printer cartridges they can print any color out there from just these three colors right it's the same thing with your watercolor paints and no the white and the black aren't primary colors okay they are neutral colors or shades and I don't know if you remember this from school, but white is actually the combination of the three primary colors and black is the absence of color. <laughs> Look at it go, guys. Okay, this isn't exactly white, it's a little bit beige, but that's because I really laid it on thick with the yellows. But uh, this is how it works in a nutshell. When all the colors combine, they make white. And we can and will later on create a very dark gray that looks almost black, so there's that. Now another big advantage to using less colors and doing a little bit of mixing, it's less intimidating, really. When we're first starting out, having too many options can be discouraging. Having just a few colors to pick from and then adjust them to what we need is a much simpler way to do it. Now honestly, I could be here all day because there is an endless number of colors we can make, so I'm just going to do my best to keep this simple, okay? Also, I'm not going to focus a lot on pigments, okay? You won't see any pigment numbers or anything like that, which means that if I'm using a brand of watercolor paints to do this and if you're using another one, odds are the results won't be 100% the same. Well, they probably wouldn't be anyway because I will not be measuring the exact amount of water and the exact amount of paint I'm adding, so, uh, you know, it was always going to look different but just so you know even if the colors have the exact same name it does not mean they all have the same pigment mix okay it will be similar but not necessarily equal and guys I know this may seem scary and overwhelming when you're just starting out but guess what I'm just starting out I'm as beginner as they come and I want you to know this is easy it really is guys there's nothing to it just give it a try and see for yourself okay Secondary colors are what you get when you mix 50-50 from two primary colors. Orange, green and violet or purple. So the colors we get from mixing a primary color with a secondary color are called tertiary colors. Tertiary? 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 I don't know, you tell me. I have no idea. Which are these two right here. So red orange, yellow orange, yellow green, blue green, blue violet, and red violet. Those are our tertiary colors in this color wheel. Colors that are across from each other are called complementary colors. So we have the red with the green, the yellow with the purple, and the blue with the orange, okay? So these are colors that when you combine them, they make one another pop, okay? And colors that are next to each other are analogous colors and they are meant to have a soothing, calming effect when used together. Now, if you mix two complementary colors together, you're essentially neutralizing or cancelling them. And that's how you get our neutral colors. So, if you mix purple with the yellow, you get your greys and your blacks. Green and red gets you a neutral brown and so does blue with orange. Now some would say these are tertiary or tertiary colors <laughs> also because you are mixing a primary with a secondary. That makes sense, right? And that's pretty much all you need to know in a nutshell. If I were to start with one color and slowly add another, you know, in small increments, I would get tons of colors 
tons of values really until I reached my second color. So if I went from yellow to red, I would start with pure yellow and I'd get all sorts of oranges until I finished with red. The same would happen from red to blue with lots of purples in between and yellow to blue with lots of greens as well. Also, you know, how fun is it to try out mixes until we find a color we love? <laughs> Take it from a person whose biggest set is 54 colors, this is much more fun. So here's how this works. Because watercolors can be mixed and then dried and then reactivated with water, essentially we play with our mixes until we find colors we want or need and then mix enough of them in pans or wells in our palettes so that they'll be ready to use any time, right? You can get yourself a metal tin to store the pans in and before you know it, you have your very own set of watercolors that you mixed that features all your favorite colors. How cool is that? <laughs> and if you'd like to watch me do that, just mention it in the comment below. But tell me guys, how much did this cost you? A fraction of what a pan set would, right? So if I were creating my own 12 watercolor set, which colors would I include? Well, for starters, the three primary colors in cool and warm tones. So I guess the essential set I've been using so far, right? <laughs> Perfect. Now, there are loads more warm and cool reds, blues, and yellows, okay? These are just the ones I've been using from this particular Daniel Smith set. So that's six right there. I would need a cool and a warm green. So let's go ahead and mix those. Ah, oh, so pretty. Now, it may surprise you that the warm green is actually, you know, darker than the cool one. Oh, that's a whole nother video. <laughs> but essentially for me, the cool colors are much more uh, vibrant than the warm ones, which is odd and not exactly what I expected, but there you go. Now guys, I know this is totally personal preference, but I need a purple in my set, okay? A violet. I use it a lot. I love dark, rich purples. I would also add a yellow ochre, which is a combination of yellow, blue, and a little red. So purple and yellow, essentially. And I guess a burnt sienna also, you know, when I first started painting, I didn't think I would need these colors, but they are so versatile. I use them all the time for underpainting and landscapes, but they also make awesome skin tones. They really, really do. <laughs> so we make burnt sienna using a red base and then adding small amounts of yellow and blue. Or green, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Now, I would need a gray as well. I know a lot of people don't use blacks or grays, but I do. I, I think they tone the colors down beautifully and they make a lovely shades, really. So, um, we would need a gray, and I am very partial to paint gray, actually, which is a mix of ultramarine blue with burnt sienna. So, it's a good thing we mixed our burnt sienna earlier, right? <laughs> And that would be my basic go-to palette. What does yours look like? Let me know in the comment below, okay? Guys, I hope that helped and that you will give color mixing a try. I hope you had fun. I know I had a blast and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.